This is a 2024 Chevrolet Corvette Convertible Stingray 3LT with the Z51 Performance Package. So even though this is the most pedestrian Corvette you can buy, it still costs $104,000 because it has basically every option you can tick on a Stingray. Even crazier than its price is the fact that I get to live with this car for an entire week. Now, normally when I spend time with a car, I'll film my little TikToks and I'll do a more formal YouTube review, but I thought people might want to know what it's actually like to live with the new Chevrolet Corvette, the C8 generation, being mid-engine and looking like a supercar. So this week, I'm going to show you. Now, the car was just dropped off an hour ago, and it is a beautiful February day here in Los Angeles. It is 72 degrees and perfectly clear. Let me show you the view. We've got downtown LA snow-capped mountains. And so on this idyllic day with this idyllic car, well, I feel like going for a drive. Beautiful day, beautiful road, beautiful car. What could be better? So there is a bit of traffic. I do live in Los Angeles County and that's kind of how it goes, even on the canyons. I'm stuck behind an Audi Q5, Volkswagen Tiguan, and Mercedes GLK. So not the most athletic vehicles, but even going slow speeds, like 20 to 40 miles an hour, this car is super comfortable. I have it in touring mode right now and the suspension is pretty compliant. These seats aren't bad. They're pretty tight. They are pretty buckety, but they're still comfortable. They're not hard or stiff in any way. And the steering, it, it gets lighter when you are in touring mode. It's not too heavy. And you can still just have a blast cruising down the road. I have the top down, windows down when I'm not trying to talk to you guys. And it is beautiful scenery. There is beautiful scenery that I am driving through. And this is an absolute blast, even if I am going a bit slower than I would like to. It's still so fun driving a convertible, no matter what speed you're going. I'm now going to the beach with my friends, but since I have more than one friend, I can't take the Corvette because there are only two seats in here. So we're taking my friend's old and dependable, not really, 2005 Volvo XC90 instead of the $104,000 basically supercar. But, you know, that's how it is. Day two with the Corvette, and I have to run over to LAX to pick up my friends, so let's go. All right, just finished working at a coffee shop and now it's time to head home. The sun is setting. It's another beautiful February day here in LA. Let's drive. <laughs> day three with the Corvette. It's a bit overcast today, which is good because I have some videos to film. So let's get going. All right, I just finished filming and it was an interesting video because last year I spent time with a 2023 Chevrolet Corvette convertible Stingray 3LT with the Z51 performance package. Very similarly spec to this car, just a different color and different wheels. Basically, that car cost $95,000. And as I said, this one is 104 grand. The base price of Chevrolet Corvette Stingray did raise almost $4,000 between 2023 and 2024 model year. So it now starts at $68,300, which is 
which is pretty pricey. And this one also has a really interesting option that adds $1,500 that I wanna show you. So this is your view of the engine when the top is down and when the top is up, just bear this in mind. And this is the engine of the Chevrolet Corvette Stingray. This is a 6.2 liter naturally aspirated V8 making 495 horsepower when you get the Z51 performance package, same as last year. What is new this year is that you can see it and that is a $1,500 option. Uh, it's broken down into two. The engine appearance package, which allows you to see the engine and makes it look all vibey, is $1,000. And then the silver bits, it's covered in sterling silver, is an extra $500. But you only get to see it on the convertible when you pause the roof mechanism halfway through its operation. You don't see it when the top is up. You don't see it when the top is down. You only get to do it when you are purposefully pausing to admire your engine. And you don't get to actually access the engine. Only service people get to do that. Uh, it's only to look at. So it's really just to show it off to your friends at a Cars and Coffee event. Other than that, you never get to see the engine. On the coupe, you get to see it all the time, but not on the convertible. I'm kind of surprised that General Motors allows you to pay $1,500 for an engine appearance package that you really never get to see. But there's another $1,500 that this Chevrolet Corvette convertible Stingray 3LT with the Z51 performance package has that the last year's one did not. Recently found out that track mode is super fun in the Corvette. It makes everything a lot sharper and just a lot more dynamic even when you are driving at slower speeds. It's a little chilly outside, it's nighttime now, but sitting in the Corvette convertible with the top down and the air conditioning or the heating on and my heated seat on, I'm very comfortable in here. Uh, the Corvette does a good job keeping the cabin warm, even if it's a little colder outside, so you can still enjoy the top even when the temperature isn't necessarily ideal. All right, day five with the Corvette. I just need to run over to the store to get groceries. Um, and the interesting thing about the Corvette is it obviously has a frunk and a trunk, but the trunk is right next to the engine, so everything gets really warm. So I'm gonna have to put everything in the frunk to not get everything warm. And hopefully everything does fit in the frunk because it's a little smaller than the trunk. So we'll see. Two grocery bags basically fit in the front of the Corvette. One of them I had to put sideways and it only had a few things in it, so it kind of worked. I don't think two full grocery bags would fully fit in the front of the Corvette, but uh, you can get like a bag and a half about uh, up there, which is nice. And you could also put stuff in the passenger seat if you are driving by yourself. It's another beautiful day in LA and I'm going to use this good weather to go for a pretty nice drive. There's a great canyon I know of about 30 miles from where I live. But first I need to get gas. And this is definitely the worst part about living in Los Angeles. The premium gas is 547 a gallon. So this is not gonna be cheap. All right, $56 later, we are full of gas and we're about 36 minutes from the canyon and then it'll be top down driving on one of the best roads around the LA metro area that I've been able to find. Um, super excited, it's a weekday too, so hopefully it won't be very busy. What a machine this Corvette Stingray convertible is. Is it so fun to drive this car on this canyon road with the top down? You can see my hair is pretty windswept. Uh, it's just so much fun. You put this car in track mode and it comes alive. This car sounds so amazing. It's 6.2 liter naturally aspirated V8. The transmission is so sharp and so dynamic. I just absolutely love driving this vehicle. I do understand why you would want a more powerful version though. On the straights, it can take a minute, especially if you're not quite in the right gear for the car to pick up speed. Um, it's still so powerful and so fast and so dynamic. I'm soup. I love the steering. I'm most impressed by the steering. I, I didn't expect it necessarily to feel this good because around town, it really doesn't feel, it feels heavy and clunky. And, but out uh, here on the track, it feels like a race car and that's really awesome. I'm loving driving this car. 
but yeah, I really want to drive a ZF6. All right, just finished up some filming and some photographs, and now it's time to head back. It is just so beautiful here. I love this canyon road, and I found a great little filming spot too that's pretty nice. Here, let me show you my view right now. That's not too shabby. It is absolutely beautiful right here. There's also not that many people here because it is a weekday. So let's go enjoy this road. Right, driving the Corvette Stingray convertible. I apologize if there's some extra wind noise, but no way was I gonna drive this beautiful canyon road with the top up. It is so nice driving this car with the top down. It is just so beautiful out, and you just really get to hear the roar of this 6.2 liter naturally aspirated V8, which really does come alive in track mode really do get to hear it better and it sounds like a race car it also it, it shifts so quick this dual clutch is really good in a performance setting less so around town i'm just so shocked by how snappy the transmission is it it is just such a joy to drive this engine is also just comes alive in track mode it sounds so amazing and so exotic it does not sound like an american muscle car v8 it sounds just great i will note the brakes are not the most confidence inspiring i do wish they had a little more grab when you stop on them they you do kind of really have to squeeze uh the pedal it's a little squishy i do wish it was a little more grippy that would be um really nice especially because this car is so fast even though this is only the stingray 495 horsepower it still hits 60 in under three seconds so in that with that power i really want to be able to stop super quickly i do think the brakes are the weakest element of this car's performance i do just wish they were a bit more grippy a bit more responsive but we're stuck behind a super forester so let me talk about other elements of this car these bucket seats are very supportive very very nice when you are carving through a canyon like I am now but even in day-to-day -day driving they're still pretty comfortable they're power adjustable at least for the driver with adjustable lumbar support which I do really appreciate um, helps make them more daily drivable so if you're thinking about getting a Corvette and you don't know if you want the bucket seats or not um, know that they are pretty pretty comfortable still um, I'm gonna hang back from the Subaru because there's a straightaway here and I want to test the acceleration so we're gonna left foot brake right foot on gas that definitely was not uh zero to 60 in sub three seconds it was going uphill but i also uh, had the traction control on so it wasn't fully revved out and you definitely feel the most amount of thrust from this engine at higher rpms which makes sense because it is naturally aspirated. Oh, this server is pulling out. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, which makes sense because this car is naturally aspirated, so that is where it when it receives its most power. But because of that, sometimes if you're in the wrong gear, um, and the transmission does a pretty good job of keeping you where the power is, especially in track mode, but if you are in the wrong gear, you can sometimes um, be waiting for the power to come. And that's, it's in those moments that I really understand why they've made a Z06, and then obviously on top of that, a ZR1 Corvette, because there is a tiny bit of delay sometimes. In the lower RPMs, this engine doesn't make too much thrust, and that would be solved with a supercharger and helped with more, just more power and more torque. So I, this car is so exhilarating to drive. I think the steering is my favorite part of driving this car. I, it feels like a race car. It is so heavy. It is so direct. There's a lot of feedback coming through the wheel. I really love this. And this chassis is also just so impressive. And this makes me so excited to eventually... Jesus Christ. This car makes me so excited to eventually drive the Z06, which has even more power, about 650 horsepower, somewhere in there, which is just bonkers to me that uh, you would have that much more power on top of what this car already has. God, is it beautiful today. 
uh, but it makes sense because the exit car is lacking in just a few areas, but I can tell how good this platform is, how good this chassis is. All of that really comes through, even in the Stingray setting, and just, I can tell that it can handle, it could handle more power. That is strikingly clear to me. Um, the power isn't necessarily a letdown. You can still have so much fun, and it grips so well. It corners amazingly. Uh, but yeah, more power would obviously make this even more enjoyable. Wow, I can see downtown LA through the smog, barely. It's a little hazy today. So these seats really hug you in place. This steering wheel is super nice. I do actually like its square positioning. Uh, it's not really great for 10 and 2, but at 9 and 3, which I think is better for performance driving anyways, uh, it is really nice. You also have paddle shifters. Um, they're a little plasticky, but I have used them and they're super lightning fast. Uh, you have a small screen. It's not huge, but it does do CarPlay, which is nice. And a fully digital instrument cluster that changes based on what drive modes you're in. So right now I'm in track mode and I have my RPMs in a line across the top and my speed and what gear I'm in, which is really nice. Your heads up display also changes based on your drive mode. So it tells me when I would need to shift in track mode if I was in manual mode right now. God, this car is just so much fun. It really stays so flat around the bend. I'm just so amazed that this car, which does compete with supercars from Lamborghini, from Audi R8, even some Ferraris, could perform this well when it costs a fraction, a third of what the, some of those cars cost. And it can deliver so much fun, especially, I love this convertible version, because it's so easy just to drop the top. And a hard top is a little heavier than obviously a T-top that the coupe version of this car has, but still it is. I haven't driven a coupe version, but this car is plenty fast. Yeah, getting on the brakes, I do wish they were a bit grippier and maybe that's partially because of the added weight of the convertible mechanism. It's just so much fun. It's very confidence inspiring this car. Even though the brakes I wish were a little stronger, I still feel very confident as I'm coming around a corner. The car stays so flat, the steering is so direct, you feel like you could go way faster. I feel like this car could go way faster than I have one, the skill for, and two, the balls for. Um, especially because the drop off on the other side uh, wouldn't be something I would want to experience. So. It, it's just such a good car. Uh, I absolutely love it. It's like behind the Chevy Trax first gen and a Honda Civic. So yeah, we're going pretty slow. And it's mostly the Trax. Crazy that this company, Chevrolet, makes such a diverse collection of cars from compact little crossovers like that to supercars like this to full-size body-on-frame SUVs. wish it was a little louder though. Um, I obviously can hear it very well with this convertible top down, but it's not the loudest. I feel like the Lexus LC500 gets louder under hard acceleration with its five liter naturally aspirated V8. Um, I think more power pumping out of this uh, with less, you know, mufflers and things like that. I mean, it's still really loud. Um, it's also windy, that could be part of it, but God, does it sound, it sounds good. I just want more of it. just coasting in track mode, the <laughs> sounds incredible. This car makes me feel like a race car driver. The steering is so heavy, the car is so flat. Formula One 2024 is starting this weekend and I feel like Lando Norris. This car is insane. It is so much fun. God, do I love driving this Corvette. 
Today is my last full day with the Corvette. What a week this has been. I've really fallen in love with this Stingray convertible. It is so much fun to drive, and this week has also been very informative. The Corvette does not really excel around town. The transmission is pretty clunky, and the fuel economy is particularly dismal in stop-and-go traffic. But if you don't live in a dense urban setting, I genuinely think you could daily drive this car. There's plenty of storage in both the front and the trunk, and it's a pretty usable cabin. And if you have a daily commute that's kind of more of cruising down 50 mile an hour roads or a highway setting versus in stop and go traffic like where I live, then this would be a great car to daily drive. It's really comfortable. It's not too inefficient when you do, when you're not in stop and go traffic. Uh, and I, it's just so much fun to drive. But this car really excels when you can get it out on the open road, a canyon road particularly, and you put it into track mode, the engine note comes alive, the steering becomes so sharp, the transmission's so lightning fast. This car is such a beast, and this platform, I can tell, could handle so much more power. I do understand, after spending a week with this car, why people want a Z06, why there is a Z06, a ZR1 on top of that, even the E-Ray and an electric model, which will probably have more horsepower than the Stingray. All of those make sense to me because this chassis, this platform is so impressive. It is so sharp and so dynamic that it could handle so much more power than the 6.2 naturally aspirated V8 makes in this particular Stingray. But even though this is the least powerful Stingray or the least powerful Corvette on offer, it's still so much fun and you are going to have a hoot driving this car in any configuration. I'm sad to see this car go. Some weeks are harder to say goodbye than others, and this is definitely one of those weeks, but I will be switching into a Toyota Supra manual, which I'll do another vlog style video for, so make sure to stay tuned for that. And in the meantime, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.